Hi, third grade. So if you remember yesterday, Chief had finally led the firemen and some of the other soldiers to the theater where they can hear Rachel and Matt pounding out SOS, meaning save us, save our souls. So now we're going to go to chapter 30. Matt's stomach dropped. His breath caught. Was the building falling on him and Rachel, even as the rescuers tried to dig them free? Then a gap formed in the rubble. Faint light gleamed from outside, and cool, smoky air billowed around Matt. The rescuers had done it. They dug a way out. Come on, kid, a man's gruff voice said. Movie's over. Where's Rachel, Matt asked. You need to help Rachel. I'm right here, Rachel said from in front of him. She'd been trapped against the building's wall, so they had reached her first. Ugh, Matt exhaled in relief. Matt crawled toward the light following Rachel's feet. Pain throbbed in his leg, and rubble scraped him through his pajamas. A pair of strong hands lifted Rachel from the rubble, and then the gruff voice murmured to her, You're safe, lass. We've got you now. Matt squirmed forward, and another man hefted Matt from the rubble. This one had a bandaged shoulder and a warm smile. A rope leash looped around his waist and dangled on the floor. I'm Bert Landry. Matt, Matt said. Matt Dawson. The gruff man asked Matt, So is Chief your dog? Or are you Chief's boy? Landry asked, bringing Matt to the wreckage-strewn street. Matt smiled. I guess we're a little of both. Well, he's quite a... Two paws landed on Matt's chest and a wet tongue licked his face. Chief, he cried. I was so worried about you. Chief licked Matt twice more. Then Matt got a face full of wagging tail as Chief turned to lick Rachel. Chiefy, Rachel said and fell to her knees to give Chief a hug. Matt coughed from the smoke and dust as he looked at the people who'd rescued them. A couple of American G.I.s stood nearby, and Matt recognized a familiar sedan, a familiar car. It was the ATS women. They were there, too. And the British firemen and air raid wardens and civil defense workers, they were scattered in the street beyond them. The destroyed street... Through the thick smoke still pouring from blazing fires, Matt saw that half of the buildings had been completely flattened. The sight made him a little faint, and he grabbed hold of Landry's arm to keep from falling. I know, kid, Landry said. You got lucky. Tell them, Rachel told Matt. Tell them about the pilot. What pilot, Landry asked. Matt took a breath to collect his thoughts. Well, we were running for the shelter in the school when we saw... Matt, a familiar voice shouted. Rachel, thank God. Matt turned to find his father running wildly toward him and Rachel, his, his face smudged with ash and his clothes filthy like he'd been digging in the rubble, which, judging from his tear-streaked cheeks, was exactly what he'd been doing searching the rubble, trying to find Matt and Rachel. Then another figure appeared behind his dad. Matt never thought he'd see his mom racing across a rubble-strewn street in her nightgown, her robe flapping like a cloak. He never thought he'd see that look on her face, either. Her relief at finding him and Rachel alive couldn't hide the terror that she'd been feeling. Matt's father took him and Rachel in his arms, squeezed them in a tight hug. Pain bloomed in Matt's leg, but he couldn't stop smiling anyway. His mother touched his face and kissed Rachel's head. Then she wrapped all three of them in her arms. She kept saying how worried she'd been and how happy she was, while his father just squeezed him and Rachel and wept. Mr. and Mrs. Dawson I'm Private Landry of the United States Army. 
The American soldier stood beside them with Chief at his heels. I'm wondering if... He's the one who found us, Matt said. Well, actually, Landry put a hand on Chief's head. Chief is the one who found them. I wanted to ask him if we could borrow him for the rest of the night. There are still people trapped. Borrow Chief? Matt's father asked. Yes, he's a natural-born search and rescue dog, Landry said. He found your kids. He found four other people, too, and he saved my life. Goodness, Matt's mother said. Well, of course, anything to help. He's not the only one who helped, a man with an English accent said, stepping closer. For a moment, Matt didn't recognize him. Then he realized it was that rat-faced man. That is, the hero, the one who was throwing the bombs off the cathedral roof. Your kids helped clear the roof, the man said. The cathedral roof? Matt's, roof, Matt's father asked. Why, they must have had quite a busy night, an ATS woman told the man, because these are the same two children who led us to an injured couple. Matt's mom squeezed him, and Rachel even harder. Looks like Chief isn't the only hero in our family. Rachel tugged at her braid, and Matt flushed. Landry crouched to tie his makeshift leash to Chief's collar. Firemen shouted. An ambulance picked its way down the street. Matt's exhausted gaze dragged over a man in a smock wandering from the smashed dentist's office at a horse and cart as a horse and cart helped clear the wreckage and then shuffle drag shuffle drag Matt's blood chilled that noise it was the limping German pilot Matt Rachel whispered shuffle drag where is he? Matt asked, scanning the smoky street. Rachel pointed with a trembling finger toward the man in the dentist's smock. It was no dentist. But Matt barely recognized the German without his flight suit. But his limp was the same. And he was wearing those waterlogged boots. Hey, Matt yelled. That man, him! He's a German. He's a bomber. 